Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I will mainly talk about uh, subcarrier spacing. Okay, so basically, uh, why I came to this topic is that uh, in case of 4G, um, for especially you know the data channels. Okay, so I will say data channels. The subcarrier spacing uh, is 15 kilowatts. Okay, right now I'm not considering uh, the P range. Okay, that's uh, the different one. But in case of 5G, uh, so for the data channels, what is the subcarrier spacing? It starts with 15 kilohertz, then uh, it goes 30, then 60, 120, and up to even you know in release 17 and 18 and all, we have up to 960 kilohertz subcarrier spacing. So why why did we uh, you know introduce these kind of subcarrier spacing? So what is the challenge that it is? Uh, trying to overcome especially you know i was talking in the previous videos right in case of 5g uh, we had move to or uh, fr2 which is frequency range 2 basically you know millimeter waves so what is the challenge with millimeter wave so millimeter wave uh, the center frequency uh, is increased so we have uh, you know 24 gigahertz and even um, around 56 to 70 gigahertz and things like that right so for such a high frequency if we if uh, we have a doppler then the doppler will be huge why because if we if we see the doppler uh, frequency equation right uh, so it is directly related to velocity of the vehicle and and also it's directly related to the center frequency fc so higher the center frequency uh, for the same speed okay let us take for the same for the same speed of the vehicle the doppler spread is higher so then what happens okay so what is this uh, doppler sp spread see this doppler spread says that let's say you have from the from the transmitter okay you have transmitted uh, uh, frequency fc but uh, you know at the receiver side uh, because of doppler spread you will see the signal not only at fc but at um, some other frequency let's say fc plus fd okay maybe here uh, fc minus fd you can say by 2 by 2 if you want to consider the the spread overall spread it as uh, fd so so this doppler spread okay uh, so doppler spread uh, if it is uh, um, if it is equal to uh, fd here uh, then uh, um, what do, what do i say like uh, if the center frequency is increased if fc is increased this doppler spread is going to be much larger so let's say if you have transmitted at fc but if you are using a millimeter wave uh, you will see that uh, the doppler spread is larger okay relative to this i would say it is larger so now what is the problem now the thing is that uh, let's say we have a subcarrier uh, um, subcarrier right let's say subcarrier one one subcarrier lies some somewhere uh, something like this okay let me write it in a, a different uh, this one so let's say one particular subcarrier um, so, so let's say first subcarrier fc1 um, so it is got let's say 15 uh, kilowatts for now then let's say if the doppler spread is smaller let's say of this much uh, this much uh, frequency range then what happens so at the receiver uh, this this would uh, um, this would be uh, coming out as a frequency uh, offset uh, um, frequency offset so we can perform frequency offset estimation and uh, uh, and uh, we can actually using uh, the algorithms we can uh, eliminate uh, this uh, using frequency offset compensation right so if it is uh, well within certain range range of frequencies then we can actually estimate it and we can eliminate it and we will be able to uh, get back our signal properly otherwise um, if you are not able to eliminate it then definitely this will introduce what is called as a ICI which is intercarrier interference and the, the signal will be distorted and you will not be in a position to recover the signal and and since this is at the 15 kilohertz 
okay this uh, particular uh, uh, range was fine but uh, now let's say if you are going for a uh, uh, you know millimeter wave this range would become um, let's say uh, this much okay then then what happens then we will not be in a position to actually uh, you know estimate and recover it, recover this back uh, using uh, the algorithms um, so this will cause a lot of uh, problems that's why we need a wider okay wider subcarrier spacing so that for a wider subcarrier spacing uh, for this much range it looks smaller okay so this range would look smaller to the wider subcarrier spacing and for this we can estimate the frequency uh, offset and and then we can take care of i mean we can perform frequency offset to compensation okay so the doppler spread can be handled very well uh, if we have the larger uh, um, if you have the larger subcarrier spacing that is one reason uh, at the millimeter waves and the second one is at the millimeter waves um, we have even local oscillator right so local oscillator would produce the uh, frequency at center frequency at c this uh, local oscillator introduces what is known as phase noise okay so uh, let's say uh, it is power of j uh, 2 pi fct right um if it produces other uh, you know um we, we can even say real part of this okay because cos omega ct is what is required so now uh, if there is a phase noise then uh, it would become e to the power of j uh, 2 pi f c t plus um, theta n of t i will say so this is the phase noise component it uh, uh, varies with respect to time okay it is a function of time and uh, this phase noise uh, since it is coming uh, uh, at this point in i mean at this uh, um, frequency uh, i mean uh, at, at this uh, uh, part part of the equation uh, we can say that this again affects the uh, frequency offset of uh, the signal okay so again uh, the similar effect what i had described uh, here with respect to Doppler the same thing happens that uh, because of this phase noise you will see that uh, there is uh, there is a the, 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 the signal you will not receive the signal at uh, exactly FC1 um, but you will see that signal is present at FC1 plus uh, some data okay there would be a spread in the uh, this uh, subcarrier subcarrier frequency and uh, and this spread uh, uh, will become much larger and larger uh, uh, you know when uh, we go for millimeter waves so this phase noise is uh, again you know directly related to center frequency higher the center frequency the phase noise is higher and then uh, you will see that the spread of the um, phase noise uh, uh, would be larger and uh, to mitigate that or to ensure that we have more robust to this phase noise uh, we should have a larger subcarrier spacing so that's why you know such a larger subcarrier spacing is required mm, and hence uh, we have um, variable subcarrier spacing introduced in 5g and depending upon the different applications we would be going for higher subcarrier spacing especially fr2 we will operate uh, at much higher maybe 120 kilohertz uh, and above okay so uh, i hope you got the clarity but there is one more reason as well okay because in case of 5g what are we doing we are increasing the bandwidth right so we are you know 400 megahertz and even we are planning to go up to uh, you know 400 800 and even up to uh, you know gigahertz and things like that let's say for now you know just 100 megahertz itself uh, I would I would say that excluding some guard band I would I will consider uh, you know 96 megahertz. If the subcarrier spacing is 15 kilohertz, then what do I get if I divide? Then I would get um, somewhere around. Uh, so let me calculate it quickly. So 6,400. Okay, subcarrier spacing. Or sub um, sorry, subcarriers. I would I would get. Okay, but what is the right high FFT to be used if it is 6400? Then definitely we have to go for uh, uh, 8192 high FFT, right? So this 8192 high FFT takes 
larger processing time okay so this would be costly and today uh, we have faster processing uh, units but still you know 8192 is a little costly um, still we need to explore on that part uh, so but uh, today in 4G, what is the maximum IFFT size we are using? Uh, 2048 IFFT, right? So from here in 5G, we have we have gone to 4096. We have already doubled, uh, uh, you know, the IFFT size and since it is a convolution and it involves a lot of multiplication and additions. Actually, um, uh, the computational complexity is not just linear; it is it is going to be exponential in the sense that to 2048 if it takes 100 a microsecond definitely 4096 will not take 100 it will take somewhere around to 230 or 240 microseconds things like that so i have just given the example okay these numbers could be different depending upon the processors and uh, depending upon the kind of implementation that you will be doing but uh, for uh, for the fixed implementation uh, you will see that uh, these are these are the differences so definitely, you know, if you are going for 8192, it is much more costlier in terms of processing. So that's why even, you know, if you use instead of 15 kilohertz, if you go for 30 kilohertz, then 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 immediately this requirement would be 3200 subcarriers, uh, which which can be uh, implemented with the 4096 IA50 point. So it is also very well uh, sitting at the right place, uh, you know, saying that uh, even with this, 30 kilo hertz increase in sub care spacing it is helping us to actually uh, use the right ISFT size uh, which is not uh, um, you know significantly increasing the computational complexity i hope uh, you got the clarity with respect to the sub care spacing so in the upcoming videos i will talk more about uh, many other concepts uh, and challenges related to 5g please stay tuned um, thank you very much bye bye please do subscribe to the channel